So this is the 1997 Ford Taurus, otherwise known as the third generation of that Taurus family. And I think that it is quite possibly one of Ford's largest failures that they ever produced. And I'm gonna tell you why. Hi, this is the Ford Taurus. And here's just a few reasons why it puts you in control. It has a great ride because of its long wheelbase. It gets you in and out of traffic courtesy of a standard V6 engine, speed sensitive power assisted steering, and with its front wheel drive, there's great traction in most any kind of weather. And here's a feature that's extremely important to your pocketbook, $1,500 cash back. Ford Taurus, it makes a point of putting you in control. So before SUVs were all the craze here in the States, sedans really did rule the land. And there was none better than that first and second generation Ford Taurus throughout the early or the late 80s and the early 90s. And it was just such a great design and it's such a timeless classic. I mean, this thing won awards, it was in movies, everybody loved the design of it. And when it came time to redesign it, the designers were rightfully stressed out. They thought that it was like being asked to redesign the Mona Lisa. And so they workshopped it, they had all these heads in it and they even did focus groups on it to try and figure out the best design. Well, and this is what they came up with. Hey folks, today's video is brought to you by salvagereseller.com. This website allows you to bid live on online salvage auto auctions without a dealer's license. You can register for free or use the 20% off coupon in the description below. Go find your salvage car gem now. So after all of that, this is the design they came up with. And well, it was not a very well-loved design. In 1996, when it launched, it was still the best-selling car out there. But if you dig into those numbers, the vast majority of them were to fleet sales. It was rental companies filling their fleet with the latest Taurus. But once 1997 hit, the Camry took over, and well, that the rest is history. The Camry still lives on today, while the Taurus is no more. And I think a lot of that is due in part to this design. And I mean, if you start to look at it, we're starting here in the back end, you can see that they went as far round as they could possibly go, starting with this back window, which is probably one of the roundest back windows I have seen on a car in the last 30, 40 years. And then this rear end design, it's just, well, it's kind of jelly bean, kind of frumpy looking, and it just did not age as well as those first two gens Taurus did. So the roundness continues onto the front, and it, when you look at this car in totality, you will struggle to find a straight line anywhere on this car, except for maybe the wiper blades. Look, even here on the front of the hood, this is still a round line. The headlights are round. The opening for the air induct is round, and it kind of gives this front a little bit of a, a smiley face look, I guess I would say. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it is what it is. You used to see these all over the place on the road, but I don't know, you just don't see them too much anymore. Now this being kind of a base Taurus, it got the base engine, which was this three liter Vulcan V6 that pumped out 145 horsepower. So it was pretty anemic as well. Um, now this V6 was actually carried over from the previous generation Taurus. If you got the LX model, you got the new three liter V6, which was the Duratec V6, and that bumped power up to 200 horsepower. And then obviously there's the SHO with the V8, which gets even more fun. So now opening the trunk, this is just kind of your classic 90s trunk. It, it's pretty spacious, it's pretty usable, but there's really not that much interesting going on back here. So on the interior of the Ford, the roundness continues, and it even starts with the hood pull. The hood pull is round. The door handle is round. The window switches are round. Uh, oddly enough, the uh, uh, thing to control the mirrors is kind of straight, but it even has some curvature going on to it. And moving on to the dash, the roundness continues, but with this shift knob or the shift lever is even round. Like they didn't want to make just a straight 
end to the shift lever. They had to make it round as well. And then onto the radio. This thing is the roundiest radio I have ever seen in my life. And now, when they were workshopping this, they said that the number one complaint of the early Taurus is that the buttons were all the same. And so they wanted to make a conceited effort to make all the buttons different. And you'll see you've got all these different sized buttons on here and different shaped buttons so that you can actually be able to tell while you're driving without looking at it what buttons you're pushing and that was kind of the intent with it. So there is one interesting party trick when you move on to the center here. Now you will see that I have kind of an aftermarket little cup holder thing. We'll just get that out of the way. You do have almost a truck-like way to be able to move across because if you fold this up, it is actually a third seat. Now the seatbelt is kind of hidden down in there right now, but this is a three across seat. And if you don't have somebody sitting there, you can flip this up and it gives you some cup holders and some storage for your tapes and some coin slots, and then an additional little place to put some extra items in the bottom. And the thing that I do like about that is once you have that flipped up, you can still flip your armrest down and still have the armrest as well as all your cup holders. So if you do actually use this cup holder, it will conveniently block pretty much the whole right side of the radio and HVAC controls. All right, guys, so starting up the, uh, the old Taurus, I have to say I've been, um, I've actually been driving this around now for a couple of weeks and you know i i sold my explorer and i just i needed another daily driver to get me around for a bit and i i don't don't have any intentions of keeping this long term but it's doing well for me right now it's always gotten me where i need to go and it's always done well and ac's always worked in fact i just recently took a trip in this up to and sorry about the squeaking, that's my foot on the pedal there if you hear it, but uh, I just recently took this on a trip up to Rapid City, South Dakota, which is about a six hour drive from where I live, and it performed flawlessly. <laughs> I think it's got a little bit of an oil leak, um, you know, so that's really the only thing wrong with it other than the cosmetics that I can see. But as far as how these drive, they drive like a Ford Taurus. I mean, it's, I don't know what you want me to say. It's, it's fairly quiet. I actually kind of like the interior. I certainly like it more than I like the exterior of the car. I even kind of dig this weird round radio thing. I think it's um, it's pretty unique. You know, there's really not many other cars out there that have a radio qu quite designed like that. Um, and the seats are fairly comfortable too. I mean, is it is it a land yacht? No, it, you know, it's not going to float over the bumps or anything like that. But it's relatively comfortable. It gets pretty decent gas mileage. Um, it's pretty cheap to keep going on the road. Parts are plentiful. They're relatively reliable. I have heard that the transmissions on these are kind of a weak point, especially with the SHOs. Um, but when you get on low miles like this, especially at this price point, like how can you argue with a $1,500 car that's got less than 100,000 miles on it, you know? and it kind of smells like my grandma's old house. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's there's really nothing interesting to report as to how it drives. It's not fast, it's not exciting, it doesn't handle particularly well, but it it does okay. Like it's, it's a livable car for sure. So you may be asking the question, why are you doing this car, Brendan? Well, I bought it. And you may be wondering why I bought it, and I bought it because, well, all my other cars are broken. <laughs> They all need something, and I guess this is part of just having a bunch of old hoopty cars and daily driving them, right? I just needed something that worked, and this, everything works on it. The AC blows nice and cold. It's actually got less than 100,000 miles. This is a pretty well-preserved example. It's not perfect cosmetically, but it is old person owned. It's even got a uh, senior center community center parking permit in the back. So this has definitely been a well-loved car and well-cared for car that I'm just kind of enjoying having something reliable to drive around that has working AC, to be honest with you. But I wanna know what you guys think in those comment sections below. Is this one of Ford's biggest failures of all time? Or am I wrong? Is this a great car that's destined to be a future classic? I mean, it's it's getting up there in age, right? Either way, thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We could really use your help growing this channel. This has been Brendan and Case behind the camera. Thanks for watching. For all of us who demand excellence in design and function, 
for all of us who will not compromise, Ford listened. Ford created Taurus for us.